Hello again. <laughs> Michael Matheson, MSP, the Justice Minister for Scotland, is failing in his commitments to deliver justice for Scotland. He will not allow me to communicate with him. He's referred my accusations on the uh, Trident scandal. Let me show you some more images of the Trident scandal. Uh, it's absolutely shocking. So there's all the details that have been sent to them. My website page has been posted for a couple of months now. Uh, and all of the correspondence and the earlier <laughs> blacked it out. Nothing that I'm exposing about the frauds and the frauds of Tim Spicer <laughs> are being allowed out into the public eye. Uh, Tim Spicer is described in even <laughs> Britain's free press as a mercenary army leader and a slave to Tony Blair. Uh, that's the English side of the border. Okay, selling Scotland's freedom for the illegitimate English crown. There's my email, my uh, earlier attempts to get in touch with Matheson. That's misspelled unless they've changed the spelling of his name. But there's the website details for Michael Matheson in the Parliament building. Uh, none of those links work. If you click on that, you do not get the capacity to email Michael Matheson at his parliamentary office where I want to meet him and Miss Sturgeon because they are compromising our country's capacity to fund itself so that they can personally gain from that. Let's have another go when we're on air. So they are email Michael Matheson's parliamentary office. Okay, this is the Justice Minister. If you hold a ministerial office and you do not allow people to contact you directly, that is a breach of the UK Constitution, even in tyrannical England. Okay? This one we've used before, which got me into a closed loop. So the scottish.ministers at scotland.gsi.gov.uk goes to an information centre in the Highlands. It's nowhere, nowhere near to <laughs> the Scottish Government headquarters in Holyrood and I'm going to appear there this week or in the next few days with the posters about their crimes around my neck. I'm going to walk along all of Princess Street over the bridges, call into the Scotsman office en route and accuse them all of treason. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying to get some friends to tag along for my own safety, eh? but because I'm contacting those friends on Skypey, they keep closing us down. Okay? There is no way that I can contact, that claims to be a contact address in at scottish.ministers at scotland.gsi.gov.uk eh? at St Andrew's House, where the profiteers work in the healthcare sector. None of my accusations and my corporate details have been allowed to be reported to serious fraud in Scotland. And the letter that I got from Michael Matheson MSP to confirm that he had received my earlier correspondence, I'll show you again, just in case you think I'm making this up. There's the Trident 4 scandal Trident 4 is interlocked with the same directors as Trident 3. There's Timothy Spicer at the bottom. Bailed out in 2010 when the Scottish Government took over. And they could have denounced him for all of that and the running of the nuclear weapons scandal out of Glasgow and the Firth of Clyde. The Trident 3 scan scandal contains the same set of directors, all of which are manipulated by the money laundering companies called Swift and Corporations and Instant Companies Limited. Uh, and Spicer, as we've since discovered, is a mercenary army leader in sub-Saharan Africa. And I can show you his profile again. 
I had it up this morning but if we hit Tim Spicer on the internet it will get you a series of explicit disclosures that the man is a violent villain strictly for cash and for the geopolitical manipulation of other countries <sighs> it's going to hang the computer it looks like I have it in a word document that I was working on this morning that will not print on my printer so that I cannot hang that round my neck when I visit Hollywood on my next surprise visit call it a revenge attack if you like the suppression of information in the UK is ruthless the citizens are being stolen from or the people because that is important according to the people that I've talked to in law ok so here's the doc document that I created earlier that is the energy scams in Scotland that's Galan a Iberdrola who earns 9 million euros a year to sell Scottish products made entirely in Scotland there's Colonel Tim Spicer who's on the board of both Trident 3 and Trident 4 and on the board of Aegis Defence Systems Limited with Boateng a former treasury officer in Westminster and uh, a list of field marshals and generals that should know better some of them are barely capable of walking that's field marshal Ing <laughs> yeah, is in the ancient pension sector and everything they do busts everybody else's pensions as they steal from the treasury okay so Colonel Tim Spicer even in popular culture is portrayed as Tony Blair's pet bulldog and an unorthodox soldier which it means he's a paid mercenary to brutalize Africa and other innocent regions there again is the director checks for the directors uh, that includes the Armstrongs that work for the BBC <laughs> uh, and fear me when I visit Oxfordshire they scuttle away <laughs> when I visit Winston Churchill's gift from the nation which is Blenheim uh, you've got a couple of Newmans on the board which is why I've been exposing Paul Newman the iconic hero in America uh, who makes mayonnaise ads for the rest of his life after he's finished making the movies about heroism in the cowboy sector isn't it tragic that there are no heroes anymore and when I made the video about the frauds involving the media and all of the women in the back room the picture that I created to sensationalize that release was included the revelation that Michael that, that James Blunt who's been prepared to make lovely songs about NATO brutalizing innocent countries is now embroiled in a homosexuality scandal uh, all of it is just a shameful cover up for the crimes of these people so there's Tim Spicer Sir Timothy Simon Tim Spicer OBE is a British former army officer ex-chief executive of the private security company Aegis Defence Services he is a veteran of the Falklands War and also served with the British Army in Northern Ireland that's with General Sir Mike Jackson's regiment and the Bloody Sunday issues which are all over my web pages but none of the politicians will receive the directorial details of where they take the money to and how they do it illegitimately into the tax havens so that the treasuries can be emptied the countries can be brutalized and no justice is ever delivered <laughs> okay Mr. Graham John Binns, Mr. Jonathan Peter Newman Instant Companies Limited Dominic Edward McCausland Armstrong Geoffrey Paul Arnold Day Mark Andrew Bullock 
Mark Andrew Bullo, that means he's a director and a secretary. Mr. Timothy Simon Spicer, Swift Incorporations Limited. Also registered, and there's the ministerial correspondence from Sean McMahon that turned into a letter from the civil service from a Mr. Miller <laughs> at St. Andrew's house who is completely anonymous on the internet and has no contact details. What they've done is to say to me that they cannot do anything about justice in Scotland as the justice ministry but I need to report the crime to the police. The police have already had the crime reported and the number for that is already registered. Kelso Police Station, incident number 410, the Trident Weapons Scandal and Law Enforcement in Scotland. Okay, I've received an official receipt from this Batard Matheson, although his name is spelt wrongly there, it does not have an I in the Matheson word. Okay, and if I click on the hyperlink at the bottom, I should be able to open that again and show you that this man is hiding behind bureaucracy. Okay, there's the letter saying that he, it's been received. I also have a receipt from the office of Paul Wheelhouse, MSP, a list member for Hoyk and a total deserter to the working man's cause and the independence movement is entirely deserted its country and sold it on to the Crown Templar which for 160 years is totally illegitimate. I get prosecuted because of my attempts to release the news to the world and the sheriffs at Jedburgh change every time that my information comes out in what have now become almost 300 telling videos on the crimes of the politicians against the people. All of that will be hanging round my neck as I walk down the treasonous Royal Mile sometime later in the week. Yeah, I'm trying to arrange a meeting with Michael Matheson and Nicola Sturgeon so that they can get the sins off their conscience and they can take Scotland back to decency. I very much doubt that they will permit me to meet them. Okay, Sean McMahon, Ministerial Correspondence Unit. The letter I got from the Civil Service is pathetic. It just refers me back to the police force and the only vent for serious fraud in Scotland, which I can find on my website elsewhere, is a P post office box number in London. I'll show you that page. Okay. Serious fraud. Serious fraud. How to report it in Scotland to the United Force. <laughs> yeah. When I asked at Kelso Police Station, they did not know how to report serious fraud. And when I turned around on the pin board, I found this poster. Okay? <laughs> so the information desk was unable to help me, but she is a really decent woman. She talks to me. And some of the coppers even talk to me. And the re revelations that are being made now by my colleagues who are jobless in Scotland because they care about Scotland are telling me that the law court that the police stations all over Scotland are involved in a program of closures which means that Stephen House gets more of the money to himself and all of the issues that I've reported in all of the previous attempts to contact Jedburgh law courts and all of my correspondence with them even the images has been confirmed as received by Jedburgh Sheriff Court. They keep changing the names as I keep exposing the names of the criminals or my informants on the crimes. So it was Sheriff Halley when Greg Hallett was exposing the illegitimacy. When I 
failed to acknowledge the Christian oath because of the illegitimacy of Christianity, they have now appointed a Sheriff Patterson because of the videos that I've made with John Patterson on the massive 2000 year old religious frauds. Okay, the post office box number to contact Scottish police <laughs> or to report serious fraud in Scotland is in the Westminster region. Okay, <laughs> and all of it is a stitch up. There is no justice in Britain. The law courts, two of the four in the borders, have now closed for lack of funds and that is why they will not let me talk about the Ponzi scams and the laundering shelves that the Law Society in Scotland run. Okay? <laughs> there is a myth that in Musselburgh, where you've got a better off together MP prevailing, eh, we would be doing well if we were able to report serious fraud to that. They told me about that at the Jedburgh Sevens. People on the touchline who work in the police <laughs> are involved with the Seven, I forget which side it was, I think it was Edinburgh Ackies, eh, and the Musselburgh office is reputed to be a serious fraud office. There is no longer a serious fraud office there and all of it is a stitch up and look at the issues that I've got to declare involving people that have been knighted within the last two years and all of these accusations failing to be published in the public eye which is why I'm going to visit the Scotsman office and embarrass them yeah I'm going to talk to hopefully their economic people who are friends of mine in LinkedIn. None of my revelations get published in LinkedIn because all of it is censored by the information propagandists like the papers. Yeah, everything I talk about in all of those 300 videos, including the student loan scam involving the English government, the Lib Dems and the DTI and the Rothschild Bank, they get covered up and as the policemen's jobs tumble, the parkies have already been displaced by private security fu uh, companies run by NATO's field marshals. That's General Sir Mike Jackson and Charles Guthrie in Dundee, all appointed by Tony Blair to steal from the rest of the world. Tony Blair is trained at FETIs like Bill Gamble, like, uh, like Stephen House, the police commissioner for the United Force. They have no vents to take any crimes in the financial fraud sector to justice. And I am going to change that before the end of this year. And it will start from this week when I appear in the Royal Mile and the Holyrood region and within the Holyrood building with the posters round my neck. So get the heavily armed police cordon ready, Stephen House. I'm not going to let you get away with stealing from our country with your forces from the metropolis and the heavily armed people that you put in place as you sack your ordinary coppers. Thank you to the ordinary coppers who talk to me about their limited future and the hours that they have to work as they suppress the protests <laughs> as the UN meet in London and they <laughs> allow the student crimes to continue unabated right under the nose of the Vice Chancellor. Many of the Vice Chancellors come from the police force now or from the intel agencies. That is Lord Kil Kirk Welpington of Northumbria University and Miss Manning and Buller of Imperial College. The links of the student loans company to Bath University and the woman Glynis <laughs> Breakwell. Yeah, she'll be doing well to stay at liberty 
shielded entirely by law enforcement both sides of that bloody uh, and deceitful treasonous border okay and there are all of the jokes that mean that Scottish law enforcement is entirely for humorous outcomes that's the Moira Anderson case that is the jokes about the ownership of Scotland's mountains and it is sang about by jokers from the Chipping Norton set that is Ronnie Barker and Ronnie Corbett there's Mackay of Clash Fern the criminal and is launched into the porridge jokes and there's Mackay in the jail with this member of the Chipping Norton set who steal from our country and the treasury with total impunity and all of the news gets covered up by her dad's empire okay I won't go any further on that because I'm repeating myself but this time Michael Matheson and Nicholas Sturgeon you're in the limelight Salmon was prepared to shit on his people for five years with a massive majority and even with the imposition of list members as opposition he did not have the courage to take Scotland's freedom forward instead he op offered op opted for the personal check in his pocket or into the havens where it's beyond regulation and the serious fraud office is a post office box number and the police did not know this until I found it out from myself from <laughs> their little handout from the wall yeah the usual suspects movie is the same storyline the evidence that the scamsters need to get to get themselves freed from law enforcement in that case in the USA in the usual suspects movie is written on the police pin board and that is enough false news to get them back to liberty like all of the Scottish politicians McCaskill has resigned in shame because of my exposures of his regime and Salmond has done the same it's gonna end really soon <laughs> yeah because you are stealing from your country and you know now that the gods are angry about that and the media <laughs> in Scotland is totally controlled by global elites since the Piso fraud was perpetrated and Sally Magnuson joined the Songs of Praise team as her pension was busted by the Icelandic banks <laughs> ok I'm going to sign off there now I will see you soon Nicola and it would be lovely to see you blushing because you are a traitor to your country and it looks as if the videos that I've posted on the Moira Anderson child murders have been blocked but let's give it a go this video does not exist this is about the law firm Levy and McRae and Anne Gloag removing the right of Scottish citizens to roam on Scottish land that is an extension of the justice abuses that Scotland has been exposed to since Cameron's government took over and since Salmon's government completely displaced the labour movement and the labour politicians all politicians all across Britain are friends of Israel they work for their own income stream and they desert their country and the people of those nations <laughs>